Meredith Morakovitz, uh, you can start. Hi, Matt. Just curious if Masahiro Tanaka threw a bullpen as planned today, and if he did, how did it go? He did uh, about 30 pitches total um, and, and a much probably higher intensity than we initially maybe expected coming in, which was really encouraging. So he was right around uh, 88, 91 in the bullpen, and uh, I think it was good to see him be able to step on it and show all his pitches. So uh, a very crisp first bullpen, so feel really good about where he's at. What will be the next step now for him? So we'll, we'll have him go bullpen again on Sunday and then hopefully kind of trend towards facing some hitters early next week um, and then kind of just reevaluate where we're at. With that situation, Masahiro said the other day, it could have been a lot worse. He got really lucky just having watched that and to see where he is now so quickly after that incident. Is that a little remarkable to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously all the talk about Masa just being a true professional and, you know, having a really strong, you know, mental game, you know, you never know what it's going to look like when someone, you know, takes a, you know, ball to the head and kind of how he'll adjust. But I think he's been really good about how he's processed it all. And he spent some time talking to Chad Bowling, our mental skills guy, just to make sure that, you know, they're going through the necessary steps in terms of just how he's processing that moment and what it means going forward and kind of the necessary steps to, get himself ready to compete at a high level again without a lot of um, maybe hesitation uh, about getting back on the mound. And, you know, he's been very firm about he feels okay with what happened. He understands, you know, the risks that are associated with the pitching. So I think just the, his care for himself in terms of the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, work to get him out of the concussion protocol, um, I think have been really strong and then just the mental approach to just, you know, the work that he needs to do to be ready to pitch again has been really good. Thanks, Matt. Take the next question from Neil Best. Neil, go ahead and unmute. Um, what do you, how far do you expect to push Garrett tomorrow? I mean, he said he wants to do a little more. Uh, do you have any pitch count in mind or how, what do you want to see? From him? Yeah, I think uh, we'll probably, Air on the side of caution in the buildup with the idea that he, he went a pretty heavy workload in a hot day uh, and he's coming back on five days for this one. Um, and then obviously we have probably six days into the first outing. Um, so it'll be probably in the similar ballpark around 85 ish, um, you know, probably no more than 90. And I would err on the side of, you know, 85 for tomorrow night. Thank you. Take the next question from Christy Ackert. Christy, go ahead. Hi, Matt. Uh, just curious, do you have um, your starters for the exhibition games? Um, I do. I don't have it with me, but I know uh, King's going to start one of them. Um, we're going to see um, Hale and Davey in one of them. And then the middle game, I, I got to go back and look, but I'll, I can get that to you guys. Um, it's going to be a little bit of, you know, mixed bag with, you know, three to four innings for a lot of these guys and then try and get the relievers in rhythm for the first game. And just what have you thought of those younger pitchers, Schmidt, Garcia, and King so far? Uh, they've been good. Uh, you know, obviously coming out of the quarantine and the COVID break, you're just never sure what guys are going to look like when they come back. And I thought... Um, the three of them have done a nice job of being prepared uh, for this environment. And then obviously, you know, with Mike and Clark in particular, they've faced some of our best hitters um, and they've done a very nice job and the stuff's been crisp. So I think given the, the preparation on their own into a major league environment uh, with not much ramp up, I think they've been uh, outstanding. Thank you. Take the next question from George King. George, go ahead. Matt, today, uh, Sessa put up on Instagram that he's back. Um, where do you start with him and how are you going to do it? Yeah, so that, that's one when we get just similar to probably the intake process we had with everybody else a couple weeks ago. Um, I think we want to see him in person, play catch, you know, kind of see what that looks like, see how he responds. Um, and then kind of get a sense of, okay, when's the right day to have him throw a bullpen if it's 
uh, day two, if it's day three. Um, I think once we kind of just see what the catch play looks like, it'll give us a, a better bearing of kind of how he's been able to keep his body in shape during this period. And then we'll kind of be able to lay out, you know, maybe a three day plan into a seven day plan. And um, I would imagine he hopefully we can get him up to speed in the next couple of weeks. But obviously t taking day one and not you know taking anything for granted will be important. See him today? I have not seen him yet. Thank you. Ron Blum, go ahead. Hey, Matt. Looking at where Massa is and the schedule, do you figure the first time you would need a fifth starter would be for the home opener and that you would bring Garrett back on normal rest for the last game in Philadelphia? Or can you would you want to hold Massa back a little more until the second turn through? Yeah, that, that's something we've kind of kicked around a little bit in terms of like where Garrett would come back on either his uh, fifth day or sixth day uh, because of the where the fifth game slots in. And then depending on what we do there, that would open up, say, if we did go on the fifth day, that first you know home opener would be a spot where we'd need a fifth starter. So who would that be? And um, obviously waiting to see kind of how Massa kind of responds over the next couple of days would kind of put that in conversation. Um, you know, obviously being able to carry 30 players and, you know, 15, 16 ish pitchers, you know, would give us a little more flexibility to not have to build him up before we bring him in. But I think we'll, that's one where we'll kind of take it day by day and obviously not put any necessary timeline on Massa just yet as much as, you know, make sure he gets through these first couple bullpens and gets a live VP under his belt. And then we can kind of assess, does that game make sense or should we go a different direction? And have you figured out how you would line up uh, the other guys in the first turn through? Uh, not not officially yet. You know, uh, Booney and I and Fish and some of the analytics guys are just kind of kicking around what the right lineup for the rotations looks like and kind of who they would face and just which environments we want them pitching in. So I'd imagine in the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours, we have a pretty good read on that. Thank you. Yep. James Wagner, you can go ahead and unmute. You have the next question. Hey, Matt, what's up? Uh, sorry for the video internet problems, yeah, but uh, at least you can hear me. Uh, one quick one, first of all, um, when someone's in isolation like Sessa or even Chapman now, can they still like play catch? Do you encourage them to play catch? Can they keep their arm moving or is it lost? Basically, do they lose that time? Yeah, it's, pro it's a tricky one because on the one hand, they're isolated, so there's no one they should be playing catch with. Um, and then depending on what level of symptoms they have and how they're feeling, you know, we're going to assume that they can't do anything and then anything more than nothing is, you know, a bonus. Um, I know Sessa has been able to do a little bit of work into a net on his own. So, you know, what level of intensity he's been able to get to in terms of pitches and, um, you know, volume. I think that's a little bit of the unknown. Uh, but I think that's why when we get to see him back the first day, I think it'll be a good, um, you know, taking inventory of where he's at physically and how it looks coming out of his hand will be really important. And then Tanner the other day was talking just about much you, know, you guys' jobs has changed as coaches and those pre-game meetings where you guys still meet indoors but with masks and sitting afar. He brought up the idea, you know, to have mountain visits where you kind of, you still have to do it. There's no way around it. I guess just, have you thought about how the, how, like how your job has changed, like whether it's the pre-game meetings or even having a mountain visit, like, are you going to discourage? Are you going to try and stop yourself from doing them, or you, it's inevitable? You have to do it. I think we're st the maybe take those two apart. Uh, yeah. As a day-to-day -day job, yeah, it's definitely different in terms of like how we're meeting with players and you know showing them information and trying to stay spread apart in our conference room. And luckily, you know, being at Yankee Stadium, we have plenty of resources and spaces to utilize to keep ourselves in you know the, within the protocols that we've got in place. So th that hasn't been too hard. It's just being probably. Um, more intentional about, you know, the meeting spaces and the times and, you know, smaller groups and more, you know, one-on-one -on -one, um, times. And then obviously, like when you're in the bullpen, you're, you're trying not to, you know, give guys, you know, knuckles or high five or anything, you know, just little things like that that you kind of catch yourself off guard doing on a day-to-day -day basis and the, the bag of balls that they've all got to carry around, you know, for themselves. I think those are the little things that just kind of catch you up a little bit. I think now we're getting into more normalcy, which uh, has been good. Just the guys are getting into better routines around that type of stuff. And then from a mound uh, visit standpoint, I guess the one nice thing is you don't have to cover your mouth with your hand or anything when you go out there with a mask on. So, 
but I do think that you're probably a little bit more, you know, cautious about the space that you're meeting within on the mound. Um, I don't think you would necessarily change the times that you go out there because of that as much as just be aware of, you know, the distancing you're giving yourself and kind of how you're approaching the conversation. Thanks, James. Sweeney, do you have a question? Hey, Matt, if you can go back maybe three, four weeks ago to when you knew what this schedule was going to be, to where you are now, how smoothly has everything gone compared to maybe what your expectations were? Yeah, I would say the, the utilization of the space throughout the day has probably been a lot smoother than I anticipated. You know, when we talked about having 60 guys here and, you know, the amount of players and staff and kind of how we're going to utilize the, the three different locker rooms and the, the meal, um, the dining area. I wasn't sure exactly what that would look like in terms of whether it was the coaching component or just knowing where guys are in it, you know, at, throughout the day. Um, I do feel really good about, you know, the quality of work that we've gotten throughout and the time we've gotten to spend with each player. Um, and then I think just the, the level of focus and intent that guys have had throughout their work has been really good. And obviously we're dealing with, uh, you know, highest level professionals uh, on a championship caliber team. So th they're obviously coming to work, you know, with a certain mentality. And I think that helps us, you know, prepare in an empty Yankee stadium, which, you know, this is all new for me, but it really new for them. Um, so I think that, you know, I, the nice part is that we've been able to put good work on the field at a high intensity level. And we've seen, obviously, the pitcher's stuff has been crisp. And obviously, you know, guys like James Paxson get on the mound in a, a game setting for the first time. You know, just getting guys to get to that game speed and then get to them to own their delivery and the execution. Um, I think that's been uh, better than anticipated. Thanks, man. Yeah. Take another from Christy Ackert. Christy. Hey, Matt, I'm just curious. Have you guys decided on how many pitchers that you're going to carry that first week or so? Yeah, we haven't got to a final number yet. Um, Booney, myself, uh, Harkey, Mendy, and then some of the you know support staff around uh, kind of went over just what the roster could look like and what some of those spots might be. I'd imagine we'd air somewhere in the 15, 16, 17 range, depending on you know where Moss is at, where Sess is at, in terms of just what that roster construction looks like, and then what the back end of the 40 man looks like. So, uh, a couple moving parts involved in that, but you know, getting closer. Thank you. Yep. 